All right. So like eight years ago, I got the chance to go on a professional ghost hunt. Now you might be thinking, professional ghost hunt? What kind of Scooby-Doo crap are you talking about? Well, I thought the same thing when my friend Brewer came up to me at work one day and was like, Hey, uh, want to go on an overnight ghost hunt at a rundown state prison? What the? An overnight ghost hunt at a rundown state prison? What are you on mescaline? What are you talking about? Well, long story short, Brewer just happened to know some people that were a part of a professional ghost hunting team. Er, I'm sorry. Professional ghost hunting society. Society sounds spookier, I guess. I don't know. Now, at the time, I wasn't aware of any professional ghost hunters, apart from the ones in the 70s that smoked pot in a van with a Great Dane. And I can't say that a professional ghost hunt was at the top of my bucket list either. But I was like 22 years old at the time, so I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll go for it. I'll go on a ghost hunt, possibly get possessed by the devil. What's the big deal? Now, this overnight investigation was at the former Mansfield State Reformatory in Ohio. And there's two things that you need to know about this place. One, it hasn't been operational for like 30 years, because apparently the prison was so shitty that the prisoners filed a lawsuit against the fucking state of Ohio. I didn't even know you could do something like that. Did they all just go into a courtroom one day like, Hey, judge, this place is a shithole. Uh, well, yeah, it is a prison. Yeah, but it's like, god damn, you know? Well, it's hard to argue with that, I guess. Sustained, overruled, shut the place down. And two, the Mansfield State Reformatory just so happened to be the filming location for the movie The Shawshank Redemption. And you bet your ass they have a museum there and they offer tours of all the filming locations. So when we got there that night, that was the first thing that we did. To hell with any goddamn ghost investigation. We got to fucking see the bench where Morgan Freeman sat at and ate a tuna fish sandwich. We got to see the line that everybody stands at at the beginning. The Brooks was here, so was Red carving in the wood. We're reenacting scenes from the movie and shit. Hey bro, check this out. <clears throat> Get busy. Busy living or get busy dying. Now oh, that's pretty good. Check this one out. <clears throat> I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. Dude, your fucking Morgan Freeman impression sucks ass. Needless to say, it was worth the trip just for the tour. But let's not forget what this cartoon's about after all. A fucking professional ghost hunt. So after the tour, we meet up with this professional ghost hunting team, their society, and at first I didn't know what to expect. I mean, what's a professional ghost hunter supposed to look like after all? I was picturing like a dude in a cloak with like a Fu Manchu mustache and like fucking cloudy eyeballs, I don't know. But instead of that, it was just a bunch of normal dudes wearing polos. Hi, my name's Bill and I do heating and air conditioning for a living, but in my spare time, I investigate the fucking dead. Now I have to say that these guys seem pretty legit with all their paranormal equipment that they had. We're talking electromagnetic field detectors, thermometers that could find cold spots so you could walk through dead people. I mean, some of the shit they had was a little questionable, but uh, well, what the hell do I know? Yeah, this here's my Spirit Blaster 9000. I use it for personal protection against demonic forces. Uh, that looks like a pump action shotgun. Oh, I'm sorry, are you the fucking professional here? It's a goddamn Spirit Blaster 9000, all right? So we break up into two teams, or well, two mini societies, if you will. There's the Tim Robbins Mini Society, which would investigate the western cell block of the prison. And then there's the Morgan Freeman Mini Society, consisting of me, Brewer, and Captain HVAC himself. And we were in charge of the eastern cell block. Now we had two basic goals for this investigation. One, study any paranormal activity that we discovered in the prison. And two, don't get possessed by the fucking devil. All right, maybe the second one was just my own personal goal. Ever since I seen the fucking exorcist when I was eight years old, being possessed by the devil has just been like a top five fear of mine, all right? And if it was ever gonna happen, it was gonna happen at a fucking overnight paranormal investigation at a rundown reformatory. So with that in mind, we start Scooby-Dooing it in the Eastern cell block. And I have to say that investigating a derelict prison is a pretty unsettling experience to say the least. I mean, it's darker than a carload of assholes in there. We're armed with nothing but a goddamn flashlight. Here's some actual footage that I recorded. And as you can see, those prisoners did have a point. The place was indeed a shithole after all. Here you can see an area that clearly says stay out, which, uh, well, we promptly ignored. And that led us to a very terrifying place. A, uh, well, it's a room full of shitters, apparently. Just a bunch of potties bunched together in the dark, which I have to say is pretty unsettling if you ask me. But the most unsettling part of the investigation was when Captain HVAC had us turn off our flashlights, sit in the complete darkness, and I don't know, become one with the state reformatory. And it was right about this point where I wondered what the fuck I was doing with my life. I mean, here I am in the dark, in the middle of an abandoned state prison, completely vulnerable. We're practically asking to get possessed by the devil at this point. There could be a fucking demon in pissing distance of us, and we'd have no idea. Any second, I'm going to look over at Brewer, and he's going to be like, I am the devil. <laughs> Meanwhile, Captain HVAC is over there, totally engulfed in all his paranormal toys. All right, guys, I'm gonna use my Spirit Detector 9000 and see what's out there. Uh, is that a fucking Nokia phone taped to a badminton racket? Shut the hell up, I think I'm getting something. 
Ah, I fucking knew it. All right, everybody, follow me. So at this point, we enter into a room that I assumed was the prison showers. And my first thought was, oh, great, the prison showers. This place surely won't be haunted as hell. Nothing bad ever happens in the prison showers, after all. And just when I think that, we heard a noise from the other side of the room. And by we, I mean two out of the three of us heard it. Holy smokes, did you guys hear that? Uh, yeah, I fucking heard that. Hey, you guys wanna get Taco Bell when we're done here? God damn it, get your head in the game. I think that noise came from that vent over there on the wall. So we go over to the other side of the room where this big ass vent is, and the fucking Nokia phone just starts going ballistic. Holy hot dogs on a stick. Boys, there might be something demonic in this vent. Uh, are you sure? It uh, just looks like a normal vent to me. No, 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 if there's one thing that I know. It's heating and air conditioning. Now, I don't care if you believe in ghosts or not. This was a pretty butthole-clenching moment, no matter who you were. The odds of somebody getting possessed by the devil had to have been through the goddamn roof at this point. Well, suddenly, Captain HVAC whips out another one of his paranormal gadgets. All right, we're gonna have to use the Spirit Box 9000 and see if this presence wants to communicate with us. Now, I gotta say, the Nokia badminton racket was one thing, but this Spirit Box 9000 contraption was on a whole nother level. Somehow, this device allows spirits to talk to the living. I don't know what the science is behind it. Something to do with frequencies and an electromagnetic whatever the fuck. But somehow a ghost can form a word with this machine and the machine says the word out loud for you to hear. It's basically a fucking speaking spell, but uh, for dead people. So he whips this bad boy out and was like, <clears throat> Hello, we are the Morgan Freeman Mini Society. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, can you tell me how dead you are? And I shit you not, as soon as he asked that, that fucking Spirit Box 9000 said one word and one word only. Murder. God, did that thing just say murder? Murder. Uh, I don't like this anymore. Murder. Murder. Murder! Blah! Oh my god! All right, all right, that's not what really happened. I, uh, kind of wish it did. It would have made a better ending to the story. But instead, what really happened was that me and Brewer sat there for like 45 minutes and watched this guy have a conversation with a fucking vent, and this goddamn Spirit Box 9000 just uttered a bunch of random-ass words that made absolutely no sense. Porcupine. Popsicles. Pumpernickel. Pumpernickel? What the hell? Hang on, is this thing fucking calibrated right? Yeah, I don't know what late-night QVC infomercial this dude bought this thing from, but it was a complete pile of horse shit. Penguins. Pop-tarts. Panama! What the hell? Why is it only saying P-words? This thing is a pup 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 piece of shit. So I think it's safe to say that we didn't experience any paranormal activity at the Mansfield State Reformatory. And that might seem disappointing at first, but, uh, well, on the plus side, nobody got possessed by the devil and did a fucking backwards crab walk down the steps either. So I consider the investigation a success. And you might be sitting there watching this like, Ah, oh, you piece of shit. What an anticlimactic ending. Well, what can I say? Real life's not a goddamn Quentin Tarantino movie, all right? Feel free to take your ass down to your local Walmart and pick up a Ouija board, and you can go talk to the devil yourself and see if you get a better ending. Good luck with that shit. In the end, we survived the investigation of the Mansfield State Reformatory, and most importantly, we did get fucking Taco Bell on the way home. So it was a great night. The end. BruceDude.com